many a tropical beach selfie has been enhanced by those beautiful swaying coconut palms leaning into the shoreline. But how do those things get there? What is a coconut? Where's the seed inside them? How do these things grow? Today we're going to take a look at the life cycle of the coconut to give you some answers to these questions. So let's start with the seeds. When a mature coconut falls from the tree, it's going to look something like this. That coconut can stay in this dormant stage without much going on for up to nine months. But when it is ready to germinate and the seedling starts to emerge, you'll get something like this popping out and you'll get roots digging down into the ground from the other end. Now, these two right here, they're in the exact same stage. The only difference is what I've done with this one is peel back the skin of that fruit to show you the actual seed inside. So here you can see a lot more root growth. You can see that thick stem and there's the leaves starting to emerge. And what actually happens here is that tiny, tiny little germinating seed will pop out of one of these three holes in the coconut that gives it the classic bowling ball look. And once it gets a little bit bigger, it's going to split open this outer shell of the fruit as well. And that's when the growth really starts. Now in any young coconut's life, there comes a time when you have to stop relying on mum's resources and find your own way. All of that delicious fresh water in the coconut seed and all of that fantastic fatty layer of meat is probably used up by this point. So the coconut needs to have found itself in a good place. And if it has, it really starts to speed up. This thing sends roots into the ground, it starts to grow, and within the first few months you're looking at up to a metre of growth. And that continues to be pretty rapid as this coconut gets older. The trunk increases in diameter, the tree grows up taller, but to get to a mature fruiting coconut palm stage, you are looking at generally about four to six years to become one of these giants. Now, when that coconut palm is fully mature and ready to start flowering, it sends forth a bud of flowers enclosed in a giant leaf that botanists call a spade. As those flowers mature, the leaf unfurls and you get this whole branch that you can see called an inflorescence, which basically means one stalk with many flowers on it. And coconuts are what botanists will call monoecious, which means not every flower is capable of producing a fruit. You have different flowers for different functions. So you have pollinating flowers, and then you have fruiting flowers. And the palm relies on insects like little native bees to bring the pollen to the fruiting flowers, pollinate them, and then those flowers can get to the work of making tiny little coconuts. So here you can see all of the coconut stages of ripening. As this thing grows from a tiny little baby coconut over the course of nine months into a mature one, it grows, the seed inside gets harder, it gets more meat, and the parent plant is essentially preparing it for a journey, possibly just to the base of the tree, but sometimes across oceans. And I'll get to that in a minute. But right now, I just want to point out, you can see as the coconut matures, it gets bigger. And this is about the stage where you would be wanting to drink the water from it. The seed's still nice and soft, easy to crack, easy to get to that water, which at this point is still really nice and sweet. Now, this coconut is a different color. But I don't want you to think that as a green coconut grows, it changes color. It's not at all true. You can find yellow coconuts at any stage. Green coconuts will still be green when they're big like this. It's all about the variety. But no matter what color the coconut is when it's young, by the time it matures, it will be this hard brown fruit, ready to drop off the tree. And here's where we're circling back around because this mature coconut falls off. And like I said, often it falls off right at the base of the parent tree. 
But that's not ideal because then that young fruit is competing with the parent as it germinates for the same resources and it's on a beach. Resources, nutrients, fresh water, they're all scarce. So you'll notice coconut trees are often leaning right out onto the sand. They're growing in the soil or the sand a little further up out of the reach of the tides, but they're leaning out onto the tidal area. And that way, a fruit drops onto the sand of the beach and it might just get carried away in the water. And these things were actually evolved for that. That's what they want. That works out fantastic for them. Coconuts float on the ocean. They can survive three months or more out at sea. And what better way to spread your genes far and wide? This thing ends up on some distant shore. There's much more genetic variability in the population. It's introducing new genes, which makes for stronger, healthier, more fit palms. It's not competing with any of the parent population whatsoever. And so it can rock up on a shore and start a new life put down its roots and get going somewhere brand new. And this is actually so ingrained, if you'll pardon the pun, in coconut evolution that we don't even know where coconut palms originally evolved because they spread across oceans all over the world to tropical beaches everywhere. And there you have it, we've come full circle. We've covered everything from germination to growth flowering, fruiting, and dispersal. So hopefully you learned something new about coconuts. Hopefully you had fun doing it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.